there, welcome. It's another episode of the ProSynth Network live show. My name's Rob, as you probably well know. Um, thank you for joining us. It's episode 185, and that number is slightly relevant to today's guest, but we'll come on to that in just a moment. Um, welcome to everyone. I hope if you're in the UK, by the way, um, I hope that you're all pretty safe because we've had some atrocious weather across the entire nation, um, even here where I am in Suffolk. Loads of floods everywhere, people getting cut off, being having to be pulled out of ditches by tractors and all sorts of things. Uh, it's not been very pleasant. And of course, if you're in Scotland, it's even worse. So I hope that you're at home, all cosy up with your internet and your, your laptop or whatever, and um, stay safe. Uh, and of course, if you are anywhere else in the world, I hope you're safe as well, because it's not a safe place anywhere really at the moment, is it? But we shan't go there. That's not what we do. Um, we are here to talk about uh, music technology news from the past week. We've also got an absolutely fantastic guest who I will introduce to you all uh, very, very shortly. Before I do, let me just very quickly just go through the usual housekeeping stuff. Um, if you haven't already, give us a subscribe and hit that bell to get notifications. That would be fantastic. Um, if you like the show, hit the thumbs up. If you don't like the show, hit the thumbs down. It's entirely up to you. And if you want to comment throughout the show, you can do so in the chat. Um, you can do that on Facebook, Twitch, and YouTube. Of course, we're across all of those. You can't do it on Twitter or X or whatever it's called these days. You can just watch us there. Um, if you want to comment after the show on YouTube, you can do that underneath. That'd be fantastic. Um, donations, if you want to donate, uh, you feel free. You don't have to. It's not obligatory, but there is a PayPal donation link in the description underneath here. Uh, it's on the screen at the moment, and you can do that. Or you can use YouTube Super Chat and Super Stickers, of which we've already had one pre-show, which we'll come to in just a moment. Um, as I mentioned before, we are on uh, X, whatever it's called, Instagram, Facebook, which is where the main group is, and of course, uh, here on YouTube. If you have a question for anybody on the show today, could you make sure you stick a big capital Q in the front of it so we can pick it out of the list and make sure that we get to it? And I think that is all the pleasantries out of the way. Yeah. Uh, so let's get rid of that off screen. And you can hear some noise in the background. Let me just bring some of those people in. He's back um, for, I don't know, the first time in a number of weeks. It's only Ben Simpson. Oh, <laughs> hello. <Come to> you <laughs> first, boss. Nice one. How yeah, are it's you good doing? to be back. Yeah, I'm I'm doing well, doing busy. well. Very busy, uh, yeah. just constantly gigging, working yeah. on uh, recorded stuff as well. So we're doing quite a bit with the band at the minute. Cool. So, yeah, it's all going well. It's good, going good, really good. well, but it's, it's nice to be back. Indeed, Looking forward good to, to see speaking you. to our guest. Even though you haven't got the proper uniform on. I know. I know. You're yeah. Excited, I'll, I'll, I'll I'll make sure that I've got it yeah. on next next appearance. Duly noted. Good to see you, though, mate. Uh, welcome back. And, of Thank course, you. we also have uh, with us Mr. Andrew Longhurst. And the Penguin, and the penguin of Death. Of death. <laughs> there he is. How are you, sir? I'm good. I'm very good. I've been looking forward to today and doing my research. And I'm wearing the right T-shirt, Ben. You are, yes. You get points. Ben. You get points. Yeah. Mm. Good stuff. Mm. Um, I've got it on underneath. Yeah. No, don't show us. Don't show us. Yeah. Um, well, welcome, gentlemen. Um, thank you ever so much for joining us as per. Kent isn't with us this week, I don't think. He might pop up at some point. Um, but as you know, Kent's not been well of late. Um, I spoke to him the other day. He seems fine. Um, he, I don't think he's had a, another turn. So um, he's probably just resting up. Uh, whether he joins us or not, that's entirely up to him. But if you are watching, Kent, um, get well soon. And uh, yeah, we hope to see you back here very very shortly Absolutely. right now i'm i'm kind of rushing through because we have a, an incredibly special guest with us this week we've only got him for the first hour of the show so we're going to try and cram as much in as we can there so we we can squeeze as much knowledge and information out of him i am i'm going to confess i might go a bit fanboy because this man has been a huge inspiration to me musically uh since i first heard his work in the uh, early mid 80s and he's been responsible for some of the most amazing pop productions um, over those intervening years, right up until this very day. In fact, in fact a new album that he has co-written and produced uh, came out just a couple of weeks ago, and we'll talk about that. Um, ladies and gentlemen, the one and the only, Mr. David Gamson. Yay! Welcome. <laughs> Good to see I'm, you again, I'm sir. my T-shirt. But uh, we'll, we'll sort that out at some point. We'll sort that out. Um, how are you? Me. I'm good, good. Good, good. Thanks for having me. 
And are we? Do we find you? Are you at home today? Is this your little? It room is room that you do your stuff in. You're, you're looking at the back wall. <laughs> <laughs> so this, when I first met you, I was expecting you to be sat in amongst all of this amazing gear. But that's really not you anymore, is it? No, I. Well, I. To my right. Well, I won't move the camera. It, no, I no. Still have my. I have a twenty six hundred. Oh, okay. And I have a mini Moog. And that's really it in here. And honestly, I don't think either of them are plugged in. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, no. I mean, if, you, if you're going to have two synthesizers, a 2600 and a mini Moog are probably... It has that. The 2600 was my father. So it has a lot of oh, emotional of course. value yeah. for me. So I will never Absolutely. get rid of that. No. But, and the mini Moog was kind of like my all-time favorite synth. So yeah. I just never got rid of that either. Has that featured pretty much on everything you've done, you'd say? Uh, not in a long time, but you know, the virtual version. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. Um, so let's crack on. Um, so by the way, I think yeah. your setup looks like it's very, all you need is a cape and you can, <laughs> yeah, quite. It's, it's expensive and it's, it's heavy and it takes up a lot of room, but uh, hopefully I'm going to be moving some of it soon. Fingers crossed. Okay. Fingers crossed. I'm interested to, un to understand your fascination with the hardware actually but... okay uh, well let's we'll come to that because I, I kind of want to start the discussion off um about what you're doing right now because that's really important and you're you 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 are super proud of this i know because every time we've spoken you always mention this and um i've been listening to it and do you know what you know we, we had this conversation i said i might it might not be up my street it's, it's kind of maybe not my thing, but the more I listen to it, the more I'm thinking, actually, no, because I'm walking around the house and I'm singing the lyrics in my head, and it's really sticking in there. Um, so you've been working with a young lady who hails from not too far down the road from me. In fact, the, the right. city of my birth. Right, that's what you said. Um, and it's uh, this lady here, and let me just bring her band camp page up on the, uh, the, the screen for everyone to see. Uh, her name is Hannah Diamond and there she is and this is her brand new album perfect picture it was released on the 6th of october and you co-wrote and co-produced this with hannah and so you are ex extremely or you produced it the whole yeah. thing okay yeah cool get that right <laughs> get the credits right um you are understandably very very proud of this but this is i think for some people who might re remember you for where you used to be this might be a slight departure or or not. I mean, you tell is, me. Actually, there is. So there's one co-production with Guy Sigsworth also. But oh, okay. Yeah. Cause Guy Sigsworth. A, yeah, just drop yeah. a good name. I know there, Guy well. He's a lovely man. Yeah. I've only ever done one Zoom conversation, so I've just oh, got wow. files. And then he spoke we'll... very highly of you, David. <laughs> <laughs> so... So tell tell us about how this whole um, whole gig kind of came about because I remember you you, you mentioned to me that you'd gone to see uh, some of this. Uh, what, it's called Pete. Well, the label's called okay. PC Music, but it's hyper pop, isn't it? it maybe explain well, a little bit. Hyper pop is kind of a name that came about to describe this kind of genre of music that kind that started really with PC Music, which was a kind of a collective of people. Um, which started about 10 years ago and there's some connection because there's a, like a, a little bit of the scritty politi dna in there because ag cook who kind of started the label liked the scritty records yeah um and somewhere along the line he got in touch and we did some writing and got along and then kind of one thing led to another and i met hannah and we kind of did a little writing and then it just kind of the relationship just really just developed mm -hmm. and then through the pandemic we did a ton of zoom calling just and writing which is difficult um and started a bunch of ideas and we just had these like many hours uh just talking about songs and developing her ideas and stuff and it just um it kind of was just a, I had a really a great time working on the stuff because I could I could work I could do stuff that I wouldn't be able to do on any other record and I could sort of just do the sort of maximalist detail stuff that I really really like that mm -hmm. um, I probably wouldn't be able to do on any other project. So, Can so we talk was... about that? Yeah. So, yeah. Go ahead. So 
How do um, I change my view that I don't have to look at myself? There we go. There you go. <laughs> now you got to look at Done. me, you poor bugger. <laughs> <laughs> so back in the sort of 2000s, I was a great um, fan of BT. I'm sure you know him. Um, yeah. He's... Uh, He's a, uh, you know, he was a, a real seminal artist for uh, for an awful lot of people and did some extraordinary things. And when I uh, I hadn't heard of Hannah at all until I knew you were coming on the show and I went and checked it out and I've listened to every single one of the tracks several times. First of all, you've done a remarkable job on it and Thanks. the detail the detail thing you couldn't have done that. It's kind of taking that DNA from BT, which everyone sort of liked, and just going. Psh, flying off with it i think it's extraordinary i was going to ask you i mean some of the vocal treatments are are really um special you know every other syllable has got a slightly different treatment a reverb tail or a dry or whatever um and i notice you're using a lot of auto tune or some such melodyne or whatever in places i guess for that specific purpose of giving it that sound and i also love it and there's one of the tracks divisible way too where you can hear her singing straight to start with and then it goes off into his thing and i just love that treatment how did that come about i mean it was you know what did you use it's an extraordinary thing well i think i'm a great fan by the way of this album really oh, really you. big fan thank you thank you um i mean auto-tune generally i think was a big part of the pc music sound and hyperpop generally um i do find that a lot of times just hard auto-tuning everything <laughs> um, just robs it of personality. Like, everybody ends up sounding the same. That's the thing. Exa- yeah, yeah. So, like, that was one of the lessons I learned. So, in the 90s, I actually was fortunate to work with Roger Troutman. And to me, that whole talk box thing is very similar to the sound of auto-tune. And... I was like in love with the talk box. And so I would just wanted him to do a mil- talk box everywhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he was very particular about having that. He was saying, oh, it gets really tiring if it's just all talk box. And so he was very careful. If you listen to those Roger records about interlacing the talk box with another vocal or harmonies or different treatment so that it didn't get so tiring to hear that sound top to bottom so that stuck with me always um and so like i am very uh aware of constantly changing the texture because otherwise i think it, it that you do and everybody just ends up sounding the same uh well you know, this it, doesn't but this this particularly doesn't and i love the fact her her accent is still right. there I think and that, it works it works yeah. also really well with the instrumentation you know a lot of the times you're starting off with with things which sound like an acoustic instrument but morph or become something else and just into these <laughs> these massive tracks um and well, i think the yeah, two that's part- another thing i love to do is like take something that sounds you know sort of like normal and then you know twist it yeah you see another angle of it yeah that's definitely uh, yeah think about that a lot and then what you said about treating like i'll treat you know every syllable will have different reverbs and (laughs) what were you what were you using for that how are you how are you doing that because that's a that's a lot of work it was a lot of work (laughs) (laughs) there's no two ways around it it's a lot of work but um so, and I'm really careful about like um, where the reverbs end. Mm. So, you know, I very rarely will just like put reverb on. So like, I'm very careful about, um, you know, I'll like print the reverbs and are they're getting out of the way of things all the time. Yeah. So, because I'm really like always trying to protect the drums too. So yeah. you know, to get out of the way and you know, the way, Modern production is so like everything is so compressed and limited that you're everything you sort of have to get everything out of the way of the drums so that you're hitting the limiter the right way if you know what I mean. Mm. Yeah, and I think when it, when you go you know, the fact that you cut to a dry vocal and a really paired back. I mean, I know that you know, everyone does a drop, but you do you use that in a particular way throughout all of these songs. I, I love, by the way, Poster Girl. That's a that's a great picture. Perfect. It's good. Um, 
but I, I but I'm very taken by the the drops, the lots of little drops into the voice to give it detail. So it brings your attention back to her and the lyric and the song again, rather than just the instrumentation. But the instrumentation is brilliant as well. You. So you. you can hear everything. That's I think I guess that's what I'm saying. I also did like a lot. I did some stuff in. I don't know if you know spectral layers. The Steinberg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I did a lot of stuff where I'm separating out, like I'll take the vocal and I sort of clean it up in there and then I'll I'll um, separate it by fundamental and the harmonics and I put yep. them each on a different track. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> you see what I'm getting here, what I'm getting here is and I've spoken to you before, David, and you know, you've told me the tales of the um, the hellish nightmare that was pretty much the, the production uh, uh, of provision as an album was a very, very long winded, detailed, intricate process. And it seems like you might be the, actually the author of your own kind of misery sometimes, because you are <coughs> such a perfectionist that you do all of these crazy things to make sure that you get the absolute best, uh, production. W would you say that was true? Um, I wouldn't call it misery, but I, that, to me, <laughs> that to me is the fun. That's the fun part. Okay. Yeah. You know, is like, uh, how, that's the bit I enjoy. I love the detail part of it. So um, I can sort of, I can go on like that forever. Yeah. It's kind of a trademark, isn't it, really? So like at a certain point, somebody has to say it's done. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have trouble with that? Do you actually have trouble saying that's it? Yeah. And move on. Yeah. 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 So I'll, what's like, the I'll just mess with something forever. Yeah. So, no, yeah. so who made that decision in this, in the, with this album, with these tracks? Who made the decision when each one was was ready? Um, I kind of would just get a read on Hannah's response. Hmm. So, like, I feel like when she was got excited about something, then I kind of felt like mm, maybe I don't want to mess with it too much from here. Hmm. So, like, once I felt like every people were responding to wherever it was, I kind of just. That was to me like, well, let me just finish it as this picture, because mm -hmm. like there were some tracks that had three or four different, com completely different tracks. You know, like mm -hmm. just a different take on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that, the song affirmations we did, man, we cut that in like three or four different keys at different tempos, with totally different vibe until we kind of figured out what it was. So and that's, what is the process that, like? What is the, between you and Hannah? Because are, are you literally doing this all over the internet, or do you actually physically get in a room together? Has, has that happened in with it's this? It's been album? both. So we did get in the room together. Um, she came to LA twice, and we did. We got a lot done for those few weeks that she was here. But so, but we had a lot of the ideas already and the starts, mm -hmm. and so we really did a lot of finishing and did most of the vocals together um that's, nice. <laughs> that's really nice um and then some a couple of them she recorded actually like on a usb mic during the pandemic oh, wow. in her yeah. in her closet i think <laughs> <laughs> so uh i think the most of the vocal in impossible and most of the vocal of picture perfect i think was done like in her place yeah what, what, which i you know then i use spectral layers a lot <laughs> right what tools are you using between i mean i guess you're using the same platform um but in terms of instrumentation and and daws you know what so what i'm on using? nuendo okay but basically cubase yeah. okay um and it's all like it's all in the box so mm -hmm. And is Hannah also uh, using her own instrumentation and adding to it, bringing ideas to the plate, or is it is it sort of coming to you? Or you're just kind of right. This is in terms of arrangement. I'm kind of doing it, but you know, we have a we talk a lot, and I'm like very tuned into what her aesthetic is, and part of her aesthetic is she's a really a great photographer too and visual artist. So. Um, that and that all kind of ties in so it informs a lot of the decisions i make about sounds is like based on her like just the things we've 
talked about and also her visuals. Like, you know, she always talks about it sounding shiny. <laughs> it does. It does have that. It has a sheen to it. It really does. Right. So, I mean, that definitely is something I think about. And I also, Sonics, I kind of think about, not too much, but I do think about it sort of fitting into her whole picture sonically, mm. you know, and where she's come from. I didn't want to, like, I definitely didn't want to try to copy stuff she'd done because I don't think I could. Mm -hmm. So, but, it, you know, it, I, I listen to it and it informs. Yeah decisions I make. And what what's what soft synths did you did you have a did you did, were you both using similar soft synths or were you using different things and what informed your choices? What did you end up using on on you know the different tracks? Did you have a, a suite of stuff you kept returning to or, or how did it what how did that work uh, for you? I kinda of think about it, it more in terms of the nowadays and more in terms of flavors like because I just I've been through the development of yeah. all these different synths so like i just think of it in flavors like there's in my head it's like oh this is an fm sound or this is a more of an analog or a super saw or like i just think of it in those colors mm -hmm. or like uh wait this is a wavetable i i don't know so um there's certain synths i go to for for those kinds of things and for me it took me a long time to come back to those kind of fm sounds because i just felt like i <laughs> Oh, killed it <laughs> in the eighties. Well, I've 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 often said that I think you know, you are responsible for for pretty much half, <laughs> if not more than half, of what I've got here because those albums, uh, you know, those scritty albums with all that FM on there was just you know the sound of my right, my but youth I, like my teenage years. For me, I kind of was I couldn't go back to FM for yeah. a very long time. Yeah, it's understandable, yeah, absolutely. So, but absolutely. the PC stuff kind of made me re. Yeah. love those sounds because they so. really are they they are big fat you know the, the the pc music and and this hyper pop is definitely informed by a lot of that that music from that era that you know guys like yeah. you were making yeah 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 and, and so it's question... like a lot of those fm sounds on a lot of like additive yeah stuff which yeah yeah like, absolutely. i do like i don't know if you guys know harmer but that thing is amazing no, harmer no. yeah harmer oh harmer yeah it's like an additive synth. Okay. It's like amazing. It's like it's very hard to get your head around what it's doing, but it's I'll like, have to look into that. It's very cool. Um, we've got a question from one of our audience members. Um, big Scritty fan here, and I love the new Hannah album. Was Provision or any of your past work an influence on the new record? Do you do a lot of self sampling or self referencing? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. Yeah, I, I think mean, it's I, just like I honestly feel like I haven't. It's just that's just I just don't feel like it's that different. I haven't. I don't feel like I changed my how I do put things together ever. It mm -hmm. just kind of developed. So yeah. I the way I make records to me feels like the same as how I used to make records. But the technology changed, and what you can do is just changed so much. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so what's next? I mean, this album says it's only been out a couple of weeks. Um, right. What what's it? What's kind of next in line for you now? I think she's actually in town, and we're going to get together. Oh, I think cool. we're probably going to do, and hopefully, we're going to just maybe do another couple tracks. I don't know. I'm just what it may. I'm really just trying to do stuff I really enjoy working on. <laughs> yeah. point. So I'm not totally sure um, what to do, do. More year. in this genre. I do like, yeah, definitely, yeah. Because yeah. the other thing I want to ask you about PC Music, the label has um, allegedly said, and you can confirm or deny that this is this album, Perfect Picture, is going to be one of the last releases they do. They've been going for about ten years, yeah. And this, this, this they're kind of drawing a line under it all. So what's yeah. going on there? So I think, yeah, after this year, it's going to be like I think remixes and an archival stuff. Um, but okay. I think it's ceasing to exist as a sort of an active label. And what about the artist? I mean, is Hannah good? Then it's just yeah, like, I don't really, I don't know. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't totally know. Like, it's been up till now, I think for her, it's just been about trying to get this record out, but mm -hmm. so I'm not totally sure what the next step is. So. This, this kind of reminds me a little of, um, uh, oh God, what's her name? Um, Tropical Brainstorm, Kirsty McCall. The last album she did before that tragic accident. You know, I never, I don't even, I never heard that. Because I only know the stuff from like the early stuff. 
go and find Tropical Brainstorm. And okay. it was a it was a complete change of direction. I think it was Steve Lipson, was it, produced it. I think so. Um, it's an astonishing album, and it's it's got a lot of different things about it. And she was ready, you know. Labels were were starting to suddenly pay attention again and go, Cry, yeah, this is this is new and different and big. We, we you know, so she got a lot of interest um, because it was such a different sound and it was so well produced. I think this feels the same. Um, I don't have too many concerns about Hannah getting signed somewhere else and or you're being able to find another outlet for this because I think this is really I think this is a really special album and I think it's going to grow thank you yeah. thank you yeah I'm I'm definitely proud of the stuff we did on it it's like it's and it's for sure that it was just the most fun I've had making a record in a long time <laughs> mainly because there was no there was no A&R yeah <laughs> there was nobody second guessing yeah. Which is like, and nobody being like, is the snare drum right? No. <laughs> yeah. I, I tell you what, I re I think what uh, sold this to me is it might, it didn't appeal to me straight off the bat. If you had just shown me this picture and said, here's an album, I would have looked at that and thought, that no, probably doesn't appeal. Listen to one or two songs and thought, yeah, they're, they're, they're good. But maybe, but the more I listen to it, the more I recognize it has all the staples of great pop in there it has a melody it has hooks uh, you know it's got all of those great things in there it's just done in a different style and once once you get used to that style it's they're all just great pop songs at the i mean end of the it's day. kind of just like a maximalist you know way of doing all of yeah, those just done, done done differently but yeah all, all the things out. are there um question from uh, one of our moderators in the chat uh ben who runs the brilliant museums website uh if if you're into Cat or going back in time with uh, music production magazines, they're all there pretty much. Um, is staying relevant to current youth pop music challenging production wise? Um, I think as long as you listen and still like it, it I don't really find it like challenging because it, I'm still like I'll still hear stuff and think, oh, that excites me. Let me try to do something like that or i don't know there there are definitely like different techniques used now than you know it, it constantly develops but mm. i don't know if it's a challenge but i just uh as long as you're i see a lot of my facebook feed has a lot of older musicians <laughs> <laughs> and uh i see a lot of complaining <laughs> don't you do, do you think though that some of that is around um people who have been around have a certain seniority in the industry um we i think we've all been guilty i have been guilty in the past of trying to force an artist down a path which they're not naturally comfortable with and i think the the difference with this is clearly hannah was already on that path she already understood that space so all the reference points were there already so it made i i'm i'm a, i'm guessing that that made that journey for you so much simpler yeah is that right? the, the other thing i'll just add to that is that as an artist she has such a profound understanding of what hannah diamond is as an artist mm. like so it makes the process so much easier rather than somebody who kind of doesn't they're just a songwriter or they're just like she has it's like a very specific vision and she knows like she's like that's not hd <laughs> this is it you know it's like it makes it so much easier because she has such a clear idea so she's pretty much in charge isn't she of everything that she does yes totally which is refreshing to see you know and it just makes everything so much easier yeah because there's first of all there's not a million cooks which that's the other issue with i think a lot of projects is that the more people it make it just makes it more difficult so yeah absolutely um but that's like that just makes it so much easier because she just really has a vision of what she is or she has she a reference a reference point which makes it very easy and it's to kind of she's kind of created like it is her but it's also this kind of idealized her so it's you know it makes it really fun yeah absolutely 
Ben, you're sat there rather quiet. Have you got any questions for Mr. Gams? Are you just happy <laughs> I'm just, to... I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm just fascinated. I, I, love, I love how... It, how honest you were about the the intricacy of uh, of the production. I find myself like trying to do that kind of thing, <laughs> end up like spending hours on something and then bending it off because it hasn't worked. But uh, well, I definitely I do the same. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, we've all got something in common. <laughs> yeah. Um, there was a question from Paul here. Now I I know that Hannah um, does perform live. I've seen a uh, you know, I've seen some YouTube clips here and there. Um, is there any plans for this to be? Uh, do you get involved with live anymore? No, you. Uh, I never I mean, got involved with live even then. No, exactly. Yeah, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's just one of those. I'm, I'm, that kind of brings me to a, a question. I'm, I'm going to ask you. I, I, you'll probably hate me for it, but you know, uh, I got to got to indulge my scritty. Yeah, uh, yeah fandom, go ahead. So, um, Green has been promising, you know, a new album f forever. And I say, when when last we spoke, you know, you mentioned that. You were sort of toing and froing and things like. Um, has has there a has there been any progress on that front? And um, are we likely to see you two together at any point soon? You know. All I can say is, <laughs> uh, you know, I I put it out there. I'm I I'm always willing to do something, mm -hmm. um, but there's really no plans at this point. So no, we, no. you know, we're always in touch. We email. Yeah um just to sort of check in with each other mm -hmm. but i really don't know I, I i don't know what's going on with that record and i don't know what's going on with nobody knows future. <laughs> yeah sit here waiting nobody knows. Years, yeah. yeah um again there's another question that um i've got here let me just bring this up here so this is one from our regular viewers wagyu who has donated 10 swiss francs uh, as well thank you for that as well for the kitty um last time you let insane stalker fanboy rob puricelli talk to you um you were 100 percent in the box um have any hardware releases since then tickled you anything on the horizon you're excited for simple, you get into simple answer <laughs> no <laughs> absolutely not are you completely just like that's it I, I don't... yeah no i don't even like i'm interested to even hear what the appeal is because it just doesn't doesn't even make sense to me at this point like is it just the performance aspect of a live keyboard because i don't i don't get what the benefit is okay no I'm so who, no 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 so, i understand yeah so here's here's because this is something which we've covered off on on several of these shows there's a lot of people talk about you know or there's a lot of releases of different hardware controllers for software because there is, you know, for a certain bunch of people, myself included, I do like having real-time control on stuff, like, immediately. So having hardware controllers for software since is, and all for, you know, for all the effects and everything else, that makes sense to me. I can't, it drives me nuts, beyond insane, to have to <laughs> mouse-click and keyboard shortcut everything. How do you deal with that? Do you use any kind of controllers to... I have to... a really... Well, I have a, pa a Nectar Panorama, Panorama P4, mm -hmm, yeah. really basic. Don't use any of the <laughs> controller knobs. So it's all mousing and clicking. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's, I'm just, I don't know. I'm coming at it much more from a programmer head rather than a performer head. So that's why, that's why I could kind of understand the hardware sense if you're performing, because mm -hmm. there is like the tactile thing. Yeah. But. I don't really program like that anyway. Okay. You really are completely in the box, aren't you? Yeah, and because <laughs> and but the thing is like if you want to get into that kind of detail, I don't know how I just don't understand how you could do that with a hardware synth. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah, I, I see that. For, yeah, for sure. And cuz um, also it's like I work on stuff for you know, weeks and months, so when I open up a session, I want it to be where I left it. Mhm. Mm and that's a real bonus, isn't it? Compared and to I also don't doing. want to have to commit to sounds until later. Yeah. I guess that's like, a... I, you know, like sometimes I'm working on just arrangements and I'm not going to worry too much about the sound. Yeah. So I don't know. It just doesn't, I don't understand for the workflow how that, how the hardware synth works. Hmm. But, you know, people love them. Yeah. I am yeah. actually just curious what, like, yeah. how people use them. Well, I mean, all I could, from my perspective, I guess um, a, a lot of it is nostalgia. Um, you know, right. 
it's like you know when we were younger you know s some people had the posters of their favorite cars on the wall or that you know and i just had favorite you know pop artists or synthesizers and when i eventually got to a position where i could afford to to buy some of these things and you know i did and i can't say i use all of these things all the time because i don't i use one or two and then some will sit there for ages but um for me the appeal is 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 definitely heavy nostalgia but also um i do like to, to be able to grab hold of things or push buttons right and, you know depending i can on understand the, that yeah. and also if you're like more coming from the player you know and you're performing as a player of course mm. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. It's just I, I'm not that guy. So yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, we've got a question from Chris Blythe here. Um, he's always liked the song "When It's Over" by Del Bertai, who is just amazing. Um, how was the production on that? He apparently he spoke to Adele about this, and she says hello. Oh, so I go. have sort of been in touch with her over the last couple of years. Oh, cool. Um, wait, so wait, what's the question? Um, how was the production on on that particular track? Because that was was that a uh, that was you and green co-write was it well, no. no no it was oh, no okay no uh it was actually so fred and i and patoker actually i think oh, right. share production credit on that um so that was like a really i think it was my first production outside of scritty mm. and um we made that record in the uk because we were all over in in london at that time and um we finished and anyway long story short uh i don't think they ever were able to put that record out because someone alerted the mu <laughs> 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 that oh. we weren't really supposed to be there making this record oh wow and uh <laughs> jesus wept so i think it was like a <laughs> big fiasco and they never put that record out i don't think even though they made a video for it wow. and um it was like a whole thing. I never got paid. <laughs> oh wow! It's like... I saw Adele uh, a few years, actually, probably more than a few years ago. Um, Thomas Dolby did a, a one night thing. Oh right, at the okay, yeah. Union Chapel because Adele, Hyperactive, it, she did. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I, and she's on stage, and she, she is this you know very diminutive, but very you know she stands out, and she's just her voice is still i mean even then it was amazing and she hit that note and i don't think they dropped the key at all for her right they she hit still hits that really high note in there i mean it's, it's such a distinctive and amazing voice that must have been a real pleasure to kind of work with with her we well, yeah, like we had written a she was signed to geffen originally yeah and we wrote a few songs um this is like really early on and then I like didn't have any production credits and they got they wanted actually tony mansfield did produce the record and they were okay. like um and so actually i think i took the songs back. <laughs> 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 so yeah i kind of got i can't remember but there, she so originally she was on geffen and then she went over to chrysalis and so there was a lot of moving around but yeah, yeah. um but I, I don't know if I answered the, uh, the actual question. Well, no, I, I think we kind of worked around it. Uh, okay. Do you still write for other people at all? Or are you just focused on one particular artist at a time? Do you still throw songs out there? Uh, I kind of got... Also seems like there was a period where pitching, writing and pitching songs was like a, a big thing in the LA songwriting scene. And it mm -hmm. seems like it's less... Pe pitching songs, it doesn't seem like people are doing it as much or not doing it successfully <laughs> or, uh, and I kind of got burnt on that. So right. like just burnt out just mm. pitching songs and like, it starts to feel like uh, you're just spinning your wheels if you're not getting them cut. So um, I kind I had a good little like couple that, that, you know, I got cut, but, and then I kind of got burnt out on that. So I haven't been doing that. I, and then yeah. I just prefer to write, with an artist and that because you can get some you know immediate feedback on is this working or not working and also when for me when you're writing songs to pitch it, they kind of have to be a very specific kind of song because they need to be able to work for anybody yeah so yeah. it's kind of just a different way of writing yeah. and um it's it's i don't know i just got burnt on it yeah no that's fair enough um, so I'm 
going to go back again um cupid psyche 85 which you know for me is one of the greatest pop albums if not one of the just the greatest albums uh, of all time in my opinion um that's approaching in a couple of years time maybe 18 months time it's, it's approaching 40 years i know crazy it's just bonkers and you know it had a i think it had a, like a 35th anniversary like reissue where they put it back out on vinyl and and, and cd um are there plans to to revisit i, know, that? I saw a lot of griping about the online about that there was was a, a little bit around there but you know is, are there any plans i know that squishy are kind of going through a reissue process so i know that um green's last album white bread black beer is being reissued and i think the early stuff is is coming out as well um are there any plans for for like celebratory versions of Cupid and Psyche? I think I asked you if there was anything sitting around in the vaults, and you said absolutely. There's nothing. We used everything we 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 did, and there's no sort of tasty tidbits. But um, can we expect to see sort of reissues of I, that I, stuff? A couple of years ago, I thought they I thought when they did Cupid and Psyche, they were also going to do provision that or like a plan, year yeah. later. But I don't. I really don't know what happened with that. No, it's not. It's not appeared. So I don't know. Whether so, yeah. you know, both he and I have a lot of issues with that. Right? <laughs> so I don't, I don't think we're like super keen to go revisit that one. They they totally screwed up perfect way, didn't they? They they put the wrong mix on, even on this reissue, didn't they? They they put that kind of weaker mixing. Luckily, at least on Spotify now, the re the the remastered yeah version has the proper perfect way on it, yeah. but. <laughs> Up until recently, yeah, you couldn't hear like the actual real version of uh, Perfect Way on Spotify. Yeah, that's crazy. So, like it was only on the on YouTube <laughs> on the video. Because it was the. So, um... oh, go, so, on. Go, go ahead. No, go ahead. Yeah, Turns so... out that I guess that version was on a lot of the like um, European versions of the album. I never knew that. Like yeah, we but... switched it, like, very late in the game. John Patoker did a remix. Yeah, with all of us kind of were involved. Um, and that was like the single version and yeah. i for america that went on the album but i didn't realize that i think in other territories it, they didn't switch it yeah i mean that was the crazy thing because i bought bought it in 85 on cassette and it had um that version you know the, the version that got released as a single that was the and, and it was tight as you know it was brilliant it was fantastic and then when i bought it on cd some years later because i thought i better because the tape was stretched it had this other version with this kind of much weaker intro. The song was you know, pretty much the same, but it hadn't got that that extra kind of uh, production on it. And so I was a little confused. And for years, you know, in the, those intervening years between getting that CD and the internet being a thing, right? You know, it, it was just like how, what was going on. And then eventually, you kind of find that there was this, you know, that the US version was the version that was on the cassette tape. And so that was the one that I would then put up, you know, upload onto my, you know, tiny little MP3 player or whatever. Um, I but mean, yeah, finding like the the tapes and the masters when we, because they, you know, they remastered yeah. the Psyche, and it was like, you know, trying to find all that stuff again yeah. is not easy. Okay. Yeah. So, so anyway, I don't know what's yeah. up with Provision, and I don't. So. Yeah, fingers crossed, because it really is a great album. I guess though. Um, you know, Rough Trade ended up getting back all those masters. I believe so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Andrew, sorry, I cut you off. No, 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 it's fine. I was just interested because since 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 all of that happened, you've had something of a rich career also working in all sorts of other medium, um, in, including film, I, I believe. Didn't you, didn't you work with hands? And have you got any other filmic stuff or TV, any other sort of things projects which are instrumental on the go or plans or thoughts about that doing an in, doing instrumental stuff um well i i was kind of in the group mix uh on mission impossible 2 over there with at hans's place which was really fun uh to work on that so like the uh it was my friend oliver lieber and i were kind of with alan myers and we're kind of in one room and we were kind of doing uh, Oliver plays drums and guitar. And so we were kind of doing the rockier stuff. Um, and it was just a lot of fun. So yeah, I would love to do more, but I just haven't. So I've done a lot of um, 
like over the last decade i've done a lot of tv stuff so like um promo work and uh not so much scoring but like a lot of promo and like um sizzles and stuff like that i've done a lot of that stuff because it's um it, it's kind of quick yeah yeah it's it's a very fast turnaround on that kind of stuff and yeah and i kind of find it like um challenging because generally um if something's tempt in and you kind of have to nail the same tone and tempo and stuff like that and, I find yeah. it, and then yeah and you also have to kind of reverse engineer what it is and why it's working um which i kind of find fun so you, and you were saying earlier on this latest album you were saying that you tend with with the synths you're you're going to be using you work sort of totally you'll find a flavor that that, that suits a particular thing maybe it's fm maybe it's um you know uh, maybe it's pulse code or whatever or, or it's uh, analog how, so what kind of how do you work with that how do you start with one of your you know one of the tracks you're working on do you start with a particular th sort of flavor in mind and just start diddling around do you do do you use a keyboard how how does your process work because there must be an element of of playing despite your wanting to be in the box there is a certain element of playing in there what how, how does that work for you uh well Somewhere in the right, usually some part of the writing process makes it all the way through. <laughs> some bit of it, like the DNA of what started that song generally does kind of make it through, which probably did have some element of playing. But even when I construct uh, synths, it's so bitty. So like, I, I probably would never have a sound that goes through the chorus. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's like, you know, I'll get the sound for a couple staff and then and, and I'm building it up in like I like sort of small building it up from small sounds. So that, that's a very orchestral way of working, yeah. isn't it? Yes. Using those little motifs, right? Yes, for sure. And textures. Yes, for sure. Yeah, cool. That goes back. I mean, that was kind of my upbringing. My dad was like a conductor, right? So like that, I was definitely brought up around that orchestral music and i definitely do think that way so I think, it, yeah, it's definitely built up in from a lot of different parts and it and it seems from what you've been saying and at the time you know where, where where you were started working and all this stuff it was the time when programmers were given a great deal more kudos programming was a thing as well as production and playing and all you know engineering and all that stuff so you don't think that's what, true now Oh, oh, yeah, very much so. But that oh, was okay. the start of it, and it's kind of carried on through. And there was a particular mindset. So, would you would you classify yourself more as a programmer now than a musician or a producer? Where, how how do you think that works? I think I always probably would have thought myself more as a programmer, um, and I also think of myself more as an arranger than a songwriter, to be honest. Um, because I sort of have even in the songwriting, I have to collaborate because I don't not really a strong lyric writer. I'm pretty good at editing people's ideas and stuff, which I've gotten better at, but you know, I'm not going to write a song on my own. So, so that's kind of, that's a mix of production programming, arranging, uh, and that's, you know, that's, that's got a very rich heritage and you, you seem to be doing, judging by this album, you seem to be doing rather well at it. You, you, do you know what? I think you could do this for a living. <laughs> huh? huh? What about that? That's the most incredible thing to me is that, like, when Rob talks about Cuban Psyche being almost 40 years, is that I can't believe I've been doing this for that long and making yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, so you I feel very lucky, <laughs> you know, super lucky that I've been able to make a living and do this stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I should have um, got, Jim, I think I sent you a picture. Then I've got, I, I got the 12-inch version of um, your first release on Rough Trade. Which um, was 1981, I think. Yeah. And wow. It, and it even had Crazy, the press right? release, hand typed press release, still <laughs> in the sleeve. Oh so my! I don't, know, I don't know where that. Yeah, I, I bought it from Discogs, I think it was. Um, well, yeah, but I mean that is crazy that yeah. they've been doing this that long. Yeah, that's all good stuff. Um, ben, have you got anything you want to interject before we go? Uh, well, I, I, I always thought that like Scritty were English. <laughs> well, 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 actually, technically, Green's Welsh. Is he? True, yeah. yeah. A bit yeah. like me. 
Te- uh-huh. I know you also technically Scritty is green. You right. Know, yeah. But you know, I basically did these two records. Well, I guess three records. Yeah. But um but like it is his project, I think, you know. Yeah. We did write a bunch together uh for those few records, not the third one, that was all him. But um yeah, but I always it is his project, so because you, you were involved, obviously a part of the band for um, keeping the cycle in provision, and you, right. you contributed. Band. Quite, we, yeah. we never played live, <laughs> <laughs> but you contributed a lot to um, Anime and Bonomy as well, which came after. Yeah, but that was like um, I didn't write on that. I was like, no. I was just the producer. Yeah, so. and of course you did those two tracks, Daylight and the Dollar Short. Um, that was more like. Uh, how we used to work, so that we just collaborated. It was, yeah. Those were really fun, and th- yeah, they were that, that classic. Yeah, it was classic, Scritty. Um, it was great to hear. I wish we could hear more, more, please. Um, so more, yeah. well, more oh, like yeah. this album, more well, like yeah. this album, please. That's that's yeah, absolutely. Yeah, more of this. Do as much of this as you want, David. <laughs> <Thanks>. Seriously. <laughs> yeah, I've got. Nice. I've. I, the trouble is, I've now got to pick it all apart. I'm going to be listening to this endlessly trying to pick apart the little things and how did you do that where, 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 what 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 well, bit did you use? <laughs> yeah yeah um yeah oh got, thank you for that yeah <laughs> we've, we've got a, a, a late question coming in from our friend simon alexander um what sampler was used for the orchestra stabs on lover to fall oh, i'm you almost sure that would have been a fair light yeah yeah because that was that was on that album for sure wasn't so, it? oh yeah that was yeah. it's funny because you know, I always feel because people talk about the Fairlight on that record, but I always feel like it was it was kind of like an afterthought, and we would do like a couple of days of uh, sessions where we just did Fairlight, but it wasn't like an integral part of the of the process at all. But yeah. that, but I'm sure that would have been a, a Fairlight only because I don't know, I don't even think an emulator was out by then. Yeah, true. It's so probably just, I know we didn't have one. Just, yeah. Because it always blew my mind. You had Simon Climey do a lot of yes. the, uh, No, he did a lot of like programming with the Because yeah. we didn't, you know, I didn't have enough money to buy one. <laughs> I never know. Yeah. And then JJ, I think. And I think Simon, was, that was actually Steve Lillywhite's Fairlight. Right. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, wonder, what, I wonder what Simon Climey is doing these days. That's, I saw him a few years ago. I think he's like living in the south of France. I don't and, know you know, he did a lot with Eric Clapton. Wow, I didn't know that. Did he? Yeah, like a lot. Because he, he was like a songwriter, backing singer type before the whole Climby Fisher thing happened in, in the mid to late 80s, wasn't he? Yes, but, and, but I think good. if yeah. memory serves, I think he was like Steve Lillywhite's Fairlight programmer, and so he gotcha. had he kind of had the Fairlight. Yeah, because, well. I mean, you look at the roster of musicians that are on, actually on, on both Cupid and Psyche, and provision i mean some just amazing some of the some of the best session musicians of the day but also the likes of people you know like miles davis of course on, on provision uh, do you i have, still can't believe that that happened i was going to say yeah you know, what are your <laughs> recollections of working with miles because that must have been mine and roger trackman as well. i mean you did stuff with him later but you know to work with him on those yeah that was amazing yeah i mean i think we just laughed in glee for the entire session because <laughs> like just ev- that was my experience working with him later in the 90s too i would just you know, you know <laughs> like, <laughs> in hysterics the whole time because everything he did was so wow. goddamn good <laughs> and like just amazing just amazing yeah i learned a lot too because like roger was very in the moment and like you know when he played a guitar part he had this like shitty Casio Strat thing that also put out MIDI and the strings had like never been changed and he, they never were tuned. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd always be like, don't you think you should tune <laughs> before we do the take? And he'd be like, whatever, dude. <laughs> uh, another another question about Lover to Fall, actually. That it is a one of the best tracks on the album. Um, why does the remastered version sound so different sonically than the original? Is that something you, you know about? or is... Does it? I'm going to have to go back and check. Really? There you go. I can't remember it sounding drastically different. Uh, Again, yeah. 
Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I got. I'll have to go listen. I mean, um, I think so. I think we when we did remaster it with Chris Athens, um, and it was just that. So when Cuban Psyche was originally mastered to CD, it, CDs were really really quiet yeah. compared to what they are now. Yeah. So I think we just kind of wanted to hit a middle ground. So it probably did get just overall a little more compressed. So, mm-hmm. but from what I heard, I thought it sounded, if you match the levels, it sounds pretty damn close. Yeah. No, I thought it sounded really good. Um, but, um, but like, cause it used to, when CDs first came out, it was like, you could never hit zero. That was yeah. like a rule. And then yeah, yeah, yeah. kept getting, <laughs> but they were also much more dynamic, weren't they? Do you well, find, yeah. do, you, do you find, I mean, that's, that's what I like about, you know, this thing as well, is there is real dynamism in it. There's real dynamic in the, in the levels. So it's not constantly sort of hitting the end stops compressed so hard that it's going, <laughs> you know, there's, there's right. real dynamic in this, which I, which I think is great. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot less than for sure. Like when you look at records, CDs from the eighties, I mean, it was a much bigger dynamic dynamic range, but you know, so we were always striving for transients. Mm-hmm. This yeah, like, this is super nerdy, but uh, like in the eighties, you know, we were always like trying to get your snare drum to be have more crack, and you know, <laughs> we'd record it to tape really, really quiet because if you didn't want the tape compression, so, yeah. This is super weird. But I remember. anyway, and it, so now, to me, honestly, now it's like you're always taking away the transients because you're trying to get your levels up overall. Yeah. I remember there was a there was a mastering engineer in LA, Bob, and I can't remember his second name. It wasn't clear about anything. He had a Neumann lathe, and we used to. Um, it was it was the practice back in those days to send over the half the, the half inch, and it was cut at half speed backwards. For, for the 12 inch mixes because the lathe head didn't have to accelerate so fast. This is super nerdy. Didn't have to, you know, because it was dropping off, it could come to a stop much quicker than it could accelerate. So you didn't end up with those smeared transits. So by cutting it at half speed back to front, you ended up with the most monster, monster That's transits. Very interesting. I wish, I wish somebody had mentioned that because, <laughs> okay, this is my last nerdy thing. And then, uh, oh, so know. funny you should mention that because when, Provision. Green had this thing about DSers, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that record could not get cut to vinyl; it would blow up the cutting heads. Wow! Um, and I spent two weeks on what had just. There was a brand new AMS digital console just came out, and you could program EQs against time code. Flat like a snap. I remember those. I remember that. Okay. So I went yeah. through the entire mixes of the entire album programming oh, <laughs> <cuts> yeah <laughs> in that range of on every s and t and every sibilant on the record wow so that we could cut that record to vinyl wow <clears throat> cool. okay wow. one last super nerdy thing you've got to indulge me on this one um you tell me about a technique that you use to get those amazing bass sounds particularly on provision where you would take an fm synth and an analog synth can you tell everyone about that that thing you know that little punchy little thing that trick that you did yeah a lot well so definitely on provision most of the uh bass was really like it's one oscillator on a mini moog um and this one little <laughs> uh dx7 sound that i called poke factor <laughs> <it>. <laughs> which was really it had no um body to the so it had no note really but um, I will put that. That's basically that MIDI to a mini Moog, um, and so that's the the click on the front of the bass. Yeah, um, it's amazing. So when, as soon as and it's all played. Me, it's all in legato mode. So yeah, yeah. As soon as you told me that, I, I did that. I got a plug in of, of mini Moog. Actually, I did a Matrix Twelve as well, and then just got an FM patch, and I just you know created something that literally is just like a you know, and there's yeah. nothing else. It was just a little thing. And the difference is staggering. And it was just like all of a sudden you've got that, that kind of scritty bass sound, which is 
dead yeah, clever. And, f- and for years, lots and lots of engineers all around the world were f- screwing around with compressors and God knows, you know, lots of different <laughs> I mean, there things. is compression as well, but yeah. yeah but yeah. they were you trying to recreate kind of the... Yeah, they were trying to recreate that sound by using compressor rather than just a DX and a Mini Moog. <laughs> <You know? Right>. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Um, we are the at the top. solution. <laughs> yeah, we're at the top of the hour, um, David. It's been an absolute pleasure to speak with you as it always yeah, is. Hopefully, this wasn't too nerdy. <laughs> no, no, I tell That's you, good. our audience is <laughs> really good. love love nerdy. Um, thank you ever so much for coming on. Is we. It took a while to get you here, but we got you. Um, I'm, I'm dead happy. I'll leave you alone now. <laughs> Not much. We, we, we still need to talk about certain things. Um, so Yeah, my TX rag. Yes, indeed. Anyway. The TX. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so listen, um, have, a, have a great lunch. Have a great rest of your day. Um, I hope that your meetings with, with Hannah that you're hopefully going to have in, in, will bring out some more excellent stuff. Yeah. Um, All right, thanks yeah, a lot. Yeah, thank you so much for coming too. on. All right. Um, yeah, can you yeah. X me from this? We we will we will take you away, and then you can just turn off. So yeah, thanks everyone. Uh, right, thanks David a lot, Gamson, Everyone, thank you very Yay! much indeed. There he is. Great. Huh? Who oh, was that? Who was that? <laughs> okay. Seriously, I mean, and Andy made a comment in the chat. Um, I, I've lost it now, but yeah, basically, um, Mr. Gamson and Mr. Gartside and Mr. Meyer as well. Um, those two albums were so rich in in like FM sounds. They had so much of that clarity um, that those synths bring. That um, yeah, it, it that it's I, if I think back, that's that's where my love for FM started, right there, without a shadow of a doubt. I think yeah. Or maybe how maybe there was a Howard Jones baseline, you know, in What Is Love. That was about a year before, but just to hear a whole album that was kind of smothered in that stuff and done so well uh, and with Fairlight you know, that's where a lot of them, yeah it's all it's all their fault <laughs> yeah uh, Ken, um, Ken, Kent's in the chat and he did ask yeah, I, can't I, noticed, find, I yeah. can't find the question at the moment but he did ask um, why David had so many combi uh, boilers <laughs> combi boilers <laughs> I think yeah, that's, I that, they yeah. were like deadening panels. I think. Yeah, they, they were. Like sound, but I, I like the. I, yeah. I like to think of them as yeah, combi look, boilers. I think the one, there was one in the corner. Looks like look a bit like a refrigerator. Yeah, it was very cool. No, was cool. And that's a great album. I really like. Yeah, you know, I didn't. It, no, I've never heard it before today. Yeah. Stunning, stunning abso- album. Yeah, absolutely. No, I when when David mentioned it uh, to me some while ago, I said, I, you know, I'm not entirely sure that's going to be my cup of tea. And, but luckily, it's on Bandcamp, so you can listen to the album on Bandcamp. And I, I put it on, and Perfect Picture, um, which is the, the you know the, the title track of the album, it just has this wonderful quality to it. And yes, you can hear, as we call them, Gamsonisms in there. You know, he's got his style, um, and and it's definitely in there. But the rest of the album is, it is it's just like a dozen really good pop songs done in a different way. And that's what uh, is obviously, you know, popular nowadays with the kids. Well, so, and I'm I'm buying who, it. Who are we to I'm, argue? Yeah, I'm buying the album. I think it's I think it's just so good. It's a lesson. Anyone that does any editing or yeah. production on, on you know, computer based, any door based stuff. If you're looking for a, for some different ways of doing stuff, have a listen to this. It is extraordinary. It really yeah, is. It really is. Um, yeah. And if you want to uh, buy it, it is on Bandcamp right now. Um, there it is, Hannah Diamond, perfect picture. You can get a vinyl version of it as well uh, for 25 quid. Um, but the digital album is a tenner, which is yeah, no money really. And you get 12 really, really great songs. And if you want to see Hannah live, so if you're in the, in the US, Andy, uh, Synth Addict, she's in your neck of the woods uh, tonight. So if you get down to the rickshaw stop, you can go and see um, Hannah Diamond in uh, San Francisco uh, yeah. right now, right this very night. And then she's in Poland on November 22nd, Barcelona um, on the 24th, Berlin on the 29th, and then she's at Heaven down in London on the 6th. So if you want to go and see her. Oh, that's there tempting. You there you go. And that's very um, tempting. Maybe we'll see. Maybe we can get us guest passes. Um, yeah, so yeah, you never know. But there you and go. T- um, re- really good. And talking of, of such things, um, earlier this week you posted on the PSN, or maybe it was on your own, uh, a, an album by a band based up in Liverpool, uh, a sort of proggy, rocky thing. Uh, oh, a new Swan, po- Chorus. Swan, oh, Swan Chorus. Swan Chorus. Yeah. 
that's another i mean you know and the synths the synth work on that and the well that's it's, that's all david yeah that's glorious yeah yeah well dave is a friend of ben and mine um it was actually really? ben yeah because yeah. you got friends yeah we got friends mutual <laughs> friends yeah no it was Oof. ben it was ben so the way ben and i met was on an akai user forum when i he he reached out for some uh floppy discs he wanted um, the os <laughs> reached out for the os went down didn't it yeah, yeah. so i said oh mate I'll, i've got loads of three and a half inch floppies here I'll, I'll copy you a disc and i'll stick it in the post so we did that and ben was um very grateful for it and then we started talking and obviously he found out that i was you know slightly um, perverted and liked fm and dave was selling his dx5 and he so that's how i got to know dave and I think it was on that first visit when I went to get the, the DX5, he got a box of the first Swan Chorus album. And I said, go on, I'll have a copy of that. So I bought, bought a copy from it. It was really, really good. It just wasn't, it was completely unexpected. Um, and it was really, really good. And then this new album, um, which is, let me see if I'll chat amongst yourselves. Um, row, it's called row, row, Achilles. Um, uh, uh, we're, uh, I've lost it now. Actually, I had it. It was all on my band camp. Um, Achilles and the Difference Engine is the name of it. Which Achilles is a great, and the Difference Engine, yeah. Which is a great name for a, um, an album. An yeah, here we go. Swan Chorus Band Camp. Yeah. Um, I have to say that it has... You know, I don't like saying... When, when you're trying to describe an album, oh, if you like such and such or so and so, you'll like this because I think that does a disservice to both both artists when you're sort of comparing and saying, well, if you like them, you'll like this because they'll probably, yeah, they'll want to be different. Um, but this, if if you are a fan of early, you know, Fish Era Marillion, that mid era Genesis, so after Gabriel left but before Hackett left, you know, that kind of middle era of Genesis. Um, it bites. There's, there's kind of elements of it bites in there. Some def definite Stephen Wilson stuff and Mike Oldfield. There's all these kind of elements. You can hear where the inspirations come from. But these songs were written like 79 to 81, I think David was saying. And they really? never got around to recording them. Yeah. And so well, now they've recorded them. And it's brilliant. I can't, Honestly, I cannot recommend this album highly enough. Um, it's absolutely brilliant. Um, the CD's only like 12 quid. And it's lovely. It's, it's in a nice little digipack, very glossy, and great artwork in it. And the songs are just incredible. So, yeah, um, go and grab your, do yourself, do your ears a favour. Yeah, which is why we have all this stuff that we have. Exactly. To and make David, things like this. Yeah. David goes back, doesn't he? I mean, he's like proper old school Liverpool scene, late 70s, yeah. early 80s, real keyboard whiz, knows his stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the, I think one of the first times I went in a, a recording studio was with Dave. Yeah. Um, and he had he had the CS eighty. He had the yeah. Uh, the DX five, the Rhodes Chroma. He had that. Yeah, well, that DX five is back there. Yeah. So yeah. David, what's his last name? Knowles. Yeah. David Knowles. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Top bloke. Really yeah, top great. bloke. Yeah, great. Very talented. I'm not surprised that you, 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 yeah. you're both praising that album because yeah. from what I know of Dave, he's, he's really good at his stuff. Yeah. Like. And that album deserves to sell an absolute yeah. bucket load. Which is why I mentioned it. It's yeah, a good thing. Absolutely. Um, before we do anything else in terms of news, um, let's see. We've got some donations that we haven't mentioned. First of all, uh, Peter James Stevens donated before we even started the show today because he's um, going to have to do, do us on catch up because it's his wife's 60th birthday tonight. Happy I'm birthday, sure. Mrs. James, James Stephen. Yeah. I'm sure she won't be too happy that you've mentioned her age live on air, but uh, or did I just do it? No, he, you did. I didn't mention yeah, but he put it. I can't edit these, you see. So, it's uh, a typo. It said it, a whatever it says there, it should yeah. be 39, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but happy birthday to Mrs. James Stephen, and thank you for your donation. Much appreciated. Um, Andrew Brooks, it's, it, it's, he makes it sound like we always twist his arm. We don't. Um, <laughs> he's, he's, one of our, he's one of our wonderful moderators, along with Andy Synth Addict, and also uh, Ben from Musings, who has, thankfully, given us another fiver for hosting the only guy in pop history that made the DX7 actually sound good. <laughs> I uh, um, yeah, kind of agree with that, yeah, for sure. Um, we love our mods. They're what's great. this idiot doing? Yeah, what is he doing? Honestly, 
there. You don't donate 20 quid to your own bloody show. He's looking well, good on his profile yeah, picture. Yeah, he does look a lot healthier <laughs> yeah, in his picture yeah, there, doesn't yeah. he? Yeah. yeah, a lot prettier as well. He's In yeah. fact, <laughs> he's had a proper makeover there. Yeah, yeah he has. Definitely, definitely yeah. yeah. Gentlemen, thank you one and all for your donations. Um, they are much appreciated and um, all go to a good cause. It's the uh, Super Booth Beer Fund. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, so, okay. Um, I'm still buzzing because hey, Dave is such a flipping hero of mine. Um, yeah, but what a guy. What a guy. And, you know, just to round that off, um, if you want to, um, please go and check out the Sound on Sound podcast I did with David because he does really go into like the history there um, of the, the the scritty stuff. So if, you, if if we thought we were light on that, um, that's because we really wanted to focus on what he's doing now. But if you want some of that stuff, soundonsound.com forward slash podcast and then um, David Gamson's podcast is in there. Um, but um, yeah just uh an absolute legend um and i've been trying to get him to come onto this show and it was almost a year ago he did and then i think you know he had issues with his back and he just had to sort of pull out so um true to his word he said he would come back and he did and there you go love him for Yay. it um <laughs> right okay so let's shall see. we let's see um where should we start i think we should start with, I think, the best piece of software news this week, um, uh, and I've I've got a video. So let me let me play the video, then I'll line up the web page. Um, this is the uh, the new release from UVI. It's Falcon Three. <laughs> <laughs> Falcon. All right. So, uh, Falcon is, in my humble opinion, the best single software instrument you can buy and have been able to buy for the, the last God knows how many years. It's utterly, utterly brilliant. It's a full on synthesizer. It's not a sampler on its own. You can do samples. It's got granular. It's got an virtual analog. It's got physical modeling. It's just got, it's got drum stuff in there. It's got all the effects and everything. And it's just this massive, massive um, tool that you can use, and you could probably easily make an entire album with just this, this on its own, just multiple Easy. instances of it. Easily, Easy. yeah. Um, it's such a powerful thing, and what makes it even more powerful is the fact you can then just add um, all of the UVI sample libraries will play. You know, all designed to play in this, so you get all of that as well. Plus, they do um, expansion packs for the. The, the synth engines as well of course you can make all of your own stuff and version 3 has come along and it has added a whole bunch of really really cool uh, extra stuff so for a start um, we've got new oscillators in there um, those oscillators include a bowed string oscillator so and you can't think you kind of heard that at the end of that trailer there there's this thing called uh, Vosim which is kind of like a formant um, synthesizer um there's also the harmonic resonator which if you think about uh propeller heads not oh, they're not propeller head anymore are they reason studios 
um, object synthesizer, which is only in Reason. Um, it's kind of like that. It's like it's a multi-layer exciter that feeds into like tunable uh, resonators, like the resonant chords in the old PCM seventy. That sort of thing, yeah. It's which I use to death. The sounds are absolutely amazing. Mm. So you get those three three oscillators. There's also new effects. There's um, Opal, which is a physically modelled optical compressor. There's a ladder filter, which is their take on the classic East Coast filter, which we all know what they mean by that. Um, and harmonic resonator, which is a signal-based resonator bank effect and disperser, uh, transient shaper. We were just talking about transients um, with variable spread frequency order and stages. There are new event processors. Um, so there's the node arpeggiator there's the motion grid there's uh snowflakes which is very cool snowflakes you see snowflakes should be almost a, you know as a standalone product i'd go yeah. and buy that yeah, yeah. it's such a clever reimagining of how to work with essentially delays yeah it's it's a brilliant brilliant thing it's really inspiration the, the tools are there just to kind of get the juices flowing and they do. I beg your pardon. Uh -huh. um, and then you've got these new workflow features, so you can actually have workspaces now, so you can just kind of zip between different things uh, very, very quickly. <clears throat> They've also added a ton of new presets in there. Um, a lot of them come with these new uh, visual designs in the. So you kind of in early versions of Falcon, some of the presets just had like very basic, uninspiring front ends, and now you've got these very pretty uh, things. But there's just so much going on. And I, we would take the rest, the entire rest of the show to go through what's going on here. Big headline thing is that this is a completely free update to all registered Falcon owners or subscribers to the um, Sonic Pass, which is their incredibly good value for money um, subscription service. You don't have to go subscription, but you can if you want. And you get everything that they do. But it's and how much incredible. is that subscription? It's what is it, Ben? Twenty four. Uh, it's euros? twenty twenty something quid. It's it's yeah. it's, it's uh, well worth a month it. or a year. Uh, yeah, a month, mm. a month. But you literally get everything. Yeah, you get everything, everything. that they make. Vintage vaults, everything. All the libraries, all yeah. the plugins, all the patches, all the instruments, all the effects. The Any whole cake? Lot. No, no oh. cake. Um, but you know, this, this synth can do additive, wavetable, vocal simulation, um, physical model strings, um, sampling. Uh, it's got granular sampling, which is just incredible. Um, it's just this. People bang on about you know, these kind of all in one things, and everyone's sort of contact is kind of like, you're, you're bit, no, an Omnisphere is another one. I can't really say too much about Omnisphere because I don't own it. Um, but I look at, I compare the two, and I think, what am I getting the most value for money? This is normally three hundred and forty-nine euros, which is the top price that you would pay currently if you want to buy this and you don't already own it. It's one hundred and ninety-nine. But if you do own it, it's free. It's amazing. It's a free update. See, I don't own this, but I've got to say, you need. Yeah, this I am tempted. Arsenal. I am tempted. Just it, get it, the Sonic Pass. Yeah. Yeah. It's well I, I, worth yeah, the money. Yeah, I've got too many. At the moment, I've got too many subscription things. I've just got to go. Whoa, whoa. I mean, if, if you compare <laughs> what you pay for this and what you pay for, say, something like Roland's uh, Cloud, UVI just trances it in terms of value for money, in, in terms of what you get. I think so. Yeah. But no cake. Uh, but no cake. Um, See? Mm. For our MPE and. Um, MIDI 2.0 fans it's also worth pointing out let me just see if I can bring this up here um, so <laughs> here we go they've got a whole bank of sounds in this new library specifically for Expressive E um, oh. so yeah so it's got an actual folder just here you see there you go Expressive E and all of these patches have been designed and programmed to work with I think Definitely the touche, which is that um, kind of expressive pad. But I would like to see or like to know if this works really, really well with um, the Osmos. Mm. So if anybody has Falcon 3 and an Osmos, do let us know in the chat if how these work. But, you know, I can tell you right now, even with a stand, I've, all I've got here, right, is my little mini lab 
three. So that's not MPE or anything. It doesn't even have aftertouch. But when you play some of these sounds and then just mess around with the modulation and the pitch bends. <laughs> There's, there's some really nice tones in there. Um, I, I shall spare you uh, any more of my bad playing. But yeah, this is great. This really is. Um, and I cannot recommend it again. The second thing, second time I've said that, I cannot recommend this highly enough. Worth every quid, says uh, Tracker I've, Jack. Yeah, it is. It's just amazing. Um, great value for money. Great value for money. What do you think, Ben? Because you, you are a... Uh, a UVI Sonic, you are our resident Sonic Par subscriber. Yeah, yeah, I, I haven't had chance to have a, a a deep dive into it myself yet, but I've I've been watching the videos, uh, been watching the videos online. And I've got it, I've got the update. I think, I, yeah, it's just it, it is. It's kind of ready to do any job you ask of it, really, isn't it? it it's yeah. it can it, it, it's fake. I, well, any any music production job that you want to oh, do, oh, <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, probably. I don't know. Maybe with some AI intervention, we could get it baking as well. But <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, I, it's just incredible, uh, and the new features that they've added. I mean, it's not like it's not like they rebuilt it from the ground up. It's still very, you know familiar to, to me because i use it all the time anyway but the, the new features like the ladder filter the different yeah. oscillators mm. uh, the new the effects. vote sim as well is, is good fun yeah yeah that's it's great well done good stuff oh, cracking job. congratulations to uh, uvi not only for just you know making something that was great better but mm. also it's very rare to have a company give an update away for free normally They'll say, "Oh yeah, give us thirty quid, fifty quid, yeah, hundred quid." Yeah. If you want, I mean, literally, they have to be applauded for that. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, they this do. isn't the first time they did it with with two, as well. So you know, if, when you bought in at one, that's all you've ever paid. Yeah, that's brilliant. Which is bloody brilliant, I think, mm. um, and it, it does put a lot of uh, other sort of selling models to shame. Um, Jason Crouch asks in the chat, it's only 199 at the minute. If you buy it, is it lifetime updates? I don't know if they guarantee that, but all I can say is historically, we got I got on at one, and I haven't had to pay for an update since. Wow. And for, for those that aren't aware, Falcon um, grew out of the ashes of what was Mac 5, which was Motu's... Um, into it. it's very very similar you know in, in terms of its layout and its structure um but because uvi made that for motu and then for reasons known only to but a handful of people that partnership dissolved and uvi took it away and then they gave us falcon which was kind of like you know i guess what mac 5 4 would have been i suppose um but and what's yeah. it like on on cpu very good but um <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, obviously, if you're using lots, you know, a big sample library, it's um, it's going to you know, put a bit of a strain on it. And obviously, I'd recommend using SSDs because their libraries are big and very detailed. But in terms of just like the raw synthesis stuff, um, I've not found it to be, I've never had an issue with uh, like CPU usage. No, I use cool. it all the time. I, yeah. I haven't noticed any. Yeah, I think compared so, to, to other things that are out there, <coughs> contact. Um, <laughs> just wave. They always seem to, UVI always seem to just kind of fly under the radar, but there's been so much great stuff made for it, um, yeah, for their platform. It's very, very good. So there yeah. you go. Yeah. Falcon version 3 is available now, uvi.com forward slash Falcon. Um, if you've got the Sonic Pass, you've already got it. Just go and download it. If you already yeah. have Falcon, just go into your UVI portal app and and set it all up. It's there. Uh, right. What should we do next? Oh, I was gonna, I, I was gonna bring this up when David was on Harmer. Oh yeah, there it is. Mm -hmm. um, it's Image Line. It's uh, Fruity Loops plugin. Oh, he uses new endo. Can you use a Fruity Loops plugin? And in... maybe he's just using. Fruit Loops is uh, just yeah. plumbing it in via rewire or something. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Good thing. 
But yeah, um, it's funny because um, a friend of mine said to me, oh yeah, my son's just bought Fruity Loops and he was kind of like implying that maybe it was just like, oh, no, Fruity Loops has come on leaps and bounds. It, I, th I think it always had this reputation of being a, um, what should we say, mm. something for, for the the younger people. <laughs> the younger generation an, an easy to use not yeah. terribly powerful platform that yeah it was it was all that sort of building yeah, things with yeah. just loops but now it's kind of pretty much a fully fledged uh, door with all sorts of things not my cup of tea but yeah lots of people get very excited about it. and there are um, so yeah. many of them out there now exactly yeah um, so yeah I just thought I'd uh, that, that's what um, David was talking about um, what should we do oh, let's, we'll, Arturia have got something new yeah, um, which is really relevant, really, to the discussions we've been having with David. Well, indeed. Uh, let me play you the trailer. Here he is. effects plugin from Arturia um, seems to be a thing nowadays isn't it motion effects that are tied to you know the beats and everything and this just seems like very surgical like you can do some amazing things with this um, it's not again it's, it's not the sort of thing I would normally go for myself but I'm very tempted because it's some of the stuff I'm hearing is uh, it sounds good. like uh, David Gamson would have a field day with this. Like, yeah. I think. Exactly. I mean, yeah. we, we, mentioned it, we? When, we yeah. were t when we were talking earlier, I mentioned about BT, um, who's an artist that I'm not sure people are that familiar with these days, um, American artist oh, think, who's yeah. stunningly clever. The telephone and, <laughs> yeah. So, and this is the kind of thing he was talking about putting together, you know, which, which just gives you all of this rhythmic, all the rhythmic possibilities mm. and breakdowns and, you know, all the kind of stuff, in fact, that Van Gelis was doing with Ring Mod and whatever else back in the day, but applying it to, to modern production. So if it's your bag, it's a mm. good thing. Um, yeah. There's, there's a... Um... There's a lot of lot of it about, as they say. This, there this is. kind of a thing nowadays. Um, everyone's doing something rhythmically with their effects. Hmm. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it strikes me a bit like the, there's a lot of people now doing um, uh, noise plugins for voices or for video or for whatever. You know, so you can extract stuff out, and uh, you know, you can isolate a voice from background noise and do all sorts mm -hmm. of things and there's 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 suddenly like there's about a hundred million of the buggers out there now because everyone's doing it this feels i mean i like the arturia stuff but this feels like another one of those i'm not sure if i'd buy it by itself because there's so many out there but I'm not i think sure. what arturia do is they make it um very very usable you know the the the, the ui on this is incredibly good the UI is good. I have to. Yeah, I have to. Very simple, agree. straightforward. You see exactly what's going on. Um, I think that a lot of the time with the Arturia plugins is <laughs> under the hood. Yeah, they might be doing things that other thing other plugins are doing, but it's that interface. Um, you know, it's kind of got that. that I think they got just... it. They got it right with pigments when they first brought out pigments with their interfaces and mm. from then they've just kind of gone from strength to strength you know and is this something do you think people in the chat any of them would use in emoms this kind of thing if, would you use this as a live thing in a an emom at an emom yeah really do they yeah do that? is not? that allowed well you know certainly people do it do it <laughs> in other sets 
TJ. Um, but but the mix of all of these things together since and you know spun in records and this, I mean it's not it's not it's not for everyone. But I'm just wondering if anyone would be tempted to use this in a live setting. Because I'm, I'm an e sticky, that's yeah. that's something which for me doing a live performance having something like this to hand. Ooh. Mm. Yeah, definitely. It's yeah. good fun. Uh, it's good fun. Ben, you uh, you see yourself using one of these? Again, uh, it's. I love some of the sounds that it, it does. Some of the filter things. Uh, if you listen to all the demos, there's the, there's one little just the audio snippet of it doing this like filtered sequence thing. It, it's just amazing. Mm. It, it's it, it's like that kind of Vince Clarky kind of bubbly oh, right, yeah. thing yeah, going on yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. and i just love stuff like that so if if i can do stuff like that with it i'll probably be interested but i i think i'll wait for the next effects pack update yeah thinking yeah. that it's going to be in there hopefully will be, yeah yeah, yeah. um because uh, are we on version two of that now dr mike says he wrote the manual well, As he does surprised. with most of their stuff, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, cool. I never read them myself, not because it, you know, Hi, Mike. by Mike, but I just, you know, I I tend, I'm as as people find out with my Synclavia thing, I tend not to read the manuals um, at all. There you go. Thank you, Mike, for your donation. Um, yeah. So there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. It mm. is interesting. Um, I don't know how it's going to fit into like. 80s music recreations very well, but uh, yeah. definitely on the original side of things, it, it's yeah. got potential there. Yeah, for sure. Mm. For sure. Right. Um, excuse me. Uh, let's see if we've got what else have we got here to talk about? Uh, oh, um, yes. There has been, we'll talk about a new synthesizer coming up in just a moment, but there have been a couple of announcements on the digital audio workstation front, this being yeah. one of them. tail on the end though because it's yeah anyway um yeah um bitwig bitwig uh, has, has come up with um a new version which i don't believe is available right away um but it might be available as a beta version um i didn't really check that out i didn't do my homework properly on that one um but bitwig's been gaining a huge amount of um followers uh particularly you know people that might not have really gelled with ableton but really did kind of like that thing because the guys behind Bitwig were ex Ableton guys, as far as I'm, I'm oh, aware. Oh, right. That's why um, it's so yeah, similar. Atlantic, yeah. That's why it's, yeah. So, um, yeah, it's just got loads of new new toys in there um, filters and wave shapers and sweeps and filters, voice stacking tools, audio um, quantize. Yeah, 5.1 or you know, multi channel mixing. Um, I mean, yeah. just that. Just that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got that in there now. Wow. Yeah, it's free upgrade to all Bitwig Studio license holders with an active upgrade plan uh, as of the 18th of October with 5.1 beta and stores available in your Bitwig user profile now. There you go. Um, they're not entirely sure when it's going to come out of beta, but they hope to have a full version released by the end of the year. Because Bitwig do this thing with... Um, you, you kind of buy a plan that covers you for so many updates... Oh, um, all right. or you can do it in in other ways. It's 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 a slightly different approach to yeah. to ownership, um, and some it, like it, some don't. But um, it looks yeah. really nice. The the design of it and that looks really yeah, it, clean. It is a very clean kind of interface, uh, but I can't really speak to it because I I've never used it. I think I downloaded a demo, and by the time I got around to using it, it timed out. So I just oh, well, never apparently. Mind. Uh, going off topic slightly but it, it's things that look visually nice i think cubase is like lacking at 
it's it's for trailing behind everybody else like quite a way now. I think right. like, things like logic and everything of all. It, it, Cubase to me now just looks really cluttered and and messy when I look. It, you know, mm. it's it's difficult to to f navigate your way around there. But apparently, version thirteen's on on the way, and mm. it's it's actually been on. It made an appearance online for a few seconds and then got took down rather quickly. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not, not entirely sure how much I can or cannot say. But yeah, yeah. yeah. It, let's just say it's been in the post for a while. Yeah, but apparently I mean, hasn't the Steinberg uh, online shop gone down or something? Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's gone yeah. offline. I, so mm -hmm. mm. there's all kinds of weird shenanigans going on. But uh, yeah, Cubase is round the corner apparently, and uh, I, I'm looking forward to that. Mm. being re refreshed visually hopefully anyway we shall see uh but that that, that looks great yeah. and you're going to be spending a lot a large amount of time looking at it so you know it's it's got to look it, good. it's it's, be... it's an important part yeah. it's not yeah. just got to be pretty it's got to be you know um yeah. useful you know? yeah so it's got it's got to serve a purpose and sometimes <laughs> yeah <laughs> thank you kent uh <laughs> with his usual wit <laughs> it's in a shed being held at gunpoint. That's probably not too far from the truth. Um, but there you go. Uh, th there was, of course, another um, uh, digital audio workstation update announced this week. And uh, in, in good old time-honored fashion, they don't splash out on, on videos and promotional things. So we're just going to have to talk about this one. But, of course, it's Reaper 7. Weeper. Um, yeah, and the Reaper has a Reaper. huge fan base, a huge fan base, because it's such a powerful... Uh, digital audio workstation that can be completely customized or, or you can just use it as it is out of the box it's cross-platform it's linux it's mac it's windows um you can stick it on a usb stick and then just plug it into any computer and just be away and, and doing stuff with it with it um it's incredibly affordable um so it's genuine kind of shareware um but if you want to use it use it commercially um then it's a, like $60 license unless they've put the price up. Uh, I don't believe they have. Let's have a quick look at what the prices are. Uh, no, so, yep, 60 bucks for a discounted license, uh, 225 for commercial use. Again, still, you know, very, very affordable, but I think a lot of people still use it on the on the trial because it's an, an un, uh, clutter, uh, sorry, uncluttered. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Help, help, help. Yeah. There's no restrictions. Is that completely unrestricted? Unrestricted. Um, and yeah. it wasn't it, I, I can't remember, if I think it's Reaper, wasn't that a bunch of ex-Steinberg employees? I believe so. And they've done a very good job with making this yeah. clean. The difference between this and something like Bitwig, this has my attention more because as a f total production um, uh, door, this works for me. This I, I get mm. this, and the the, the ability to customise. Bitwig looks great. I think it would be a good replacement, and I've seen lots of people saying they've moved from Ableton to Bitwig, but it's a different ethos. It's not mm. really. I mean, although apparently you can also set up Bitwig to to do the whole tracking thing as well. Um, mm. um, so who ah, knows? There you go. So no. So just to get some clarification through from our chatties. Thank you very much. Um, the Winner. Steinberg guys did Studio One. That's the one. Thank These you for clarifying that. Win, win up. Yeah. So yeah, everyone comes from somewhere, I guess. Thank you. Um, thank you, guys. So thank you for the clarification. But yeah, I mean, just I mean, just look at the the list of things that have been changed or updated or added. Um, this is one thing with Reaper; it's constantly being updated. It doesn't, you know, they don't hang around for point releases willy nilly if something needs doing they do it and they put it out there and it's it's updated um i mm. i really tried i really wanted to fall in love with it and i still keep it around so why didn't you what was it that you didn't what it's, got in it, the way that it was because i think that it allowed you to customize things so much that it, it didn't come with the things that just made my life easy you know the mm. other doors had automatic kind of features for with with reaper there was a i needed to spend a bit more time learning it and i'm just lazy yeah so rather than better. boot up get going plug yeah. your door you know plug the yeah. mic in and away you go or synths or whatever yeah. you actually had to give some it's thought a, it's, to it it's a little more finicky, finicky. As, yeah and 
I think you know visually it's it's nice enough. I did I I got into the whole world of skins with this. I, I remember there's, there is a skin for it that just makes it look amazing. But I just think I, I'm supposed to be using this to make music, not to sit here and go, "Ooh, that's pretty." <laughs> that's know? a pretty thing. <laughs> yeah. So, but I keep it around because it's it might just one day become useful, and you know I can keep it on the trial version. Um, I don't really use it for anything, but um, yeah, I'll I, make I it just, a go. Yeah, yeah, it's worth. Yeah, I mean, you've got nothing to lose. Yeah, you know, yeah. I love the fact that, that it says added since version six razor edits, and it's kind of that's the kind of thing that makes me go. Yeah, <laughs> mm. why was that wasn't in for the beginning? <laughs> so, but it's, but I'm I'm still yeah. I have to say it does look yeah. like a, a good thing, and the fact that it's completely cross platform. Um, that's a real big benefit. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, you it know, is. I, 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 there's there's a whole bunch. I mean, there's a ton of free educational content online youtube videos by you know people from the the reaper community and i did sit down with those things after a while just like oh, just get to the good stuff just get to the good stuff just, I, don't, I don't need to be worrying about all this <laughs> and i think maybe that's when i kind of went i'll just go back to logic does it have its own plugins or is it just using yes, vsts it does. no it does, it does. It, yeah they have their own little plug-in format as well uh, there's no, it's not a Big thing. I think they also incorporate Clap. They were one of the first mm. uh, platforms to to take on the Clap plugin format. Does it support VST? Oh, it does. Yes, VST. Oh, yeah, yeah, VST supports VST VSTs through. and audio units. And yeah, LV2, so there's, there's, no, yeah. there's no real restriction there. But um, yeah, no, it's, it's a lovely thing, and it's just been updated to seven. So there you go. It's oh, all good. good. Uh, what's the time? We've got about four or a few minutes. Uh, let's see. Well, let's talk about this this other new synthesizer that is yeah. rather nice. Yeah, that's, um, yeah, yeah. And and um, our guest, Mr. Gamson, was talking to me about this um, this week. He said, "Oh, have you have you tried this? It's like really cool." Um, and so I downloaded the demo. There's a three you get a three week trial on this. This is uh, from Sonic Charge. Uh, this is Synplant Two, uh, which has been updated. Uh, from Simplant One, strangely enough. Um, curiously, yeah. Yeah, it's curious. It's it's kind of um, like I don't want to use machine. the term, but yeah, it's AI kind of based. Um, you can you can create your own sounds using this plant. And, you know, there's a seed in the middle, and you can draw the elements, you know, the branches of that out, um, and you can make each different note in a scale sound slightly different. And then you can automate that and you can mess around with it in all sorts of ways. And then you can go to this DNA screen where you know you, you can like pick little bits. It's just very easy to get something sounding amazing. But it's but based then, on it's based on you have to load up a sound first no. of all. That's the seed. Yeah, I mean it comes with a whole bunch of stuff already in there, so you don't necessarily yeah. have to, but there's yeah, I mean that's the other thing is you can then take a sound, any sound, a sample, put it in there. And it will listen to that, and then it will create patches that are very similar in nature to that, but different. And then you've got these kind of things growing, and then you just grab bits, and you can then take a little branch off somewhere else and see. Can we play goes. the video, or are we? we can. Like... No, we have got a video for this. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, let's do the intro. Here we go. <laughs> Sonic Charge, um, yeah. So 
this geno patch technology you just load in a sample and then just kind of hit the these buttons and it will start to generate these different sounds with all these little points on them and then you can take those points and then just move them around and start to and it's very quick to come up with something that sounds really bonkers but it's also very simple to come up with something that sounds really musical as well so it it kind of covers like all of the things and then you've got this dna that you can dive into and, and grabbing each one of these dots will then affect you know things like the envelopes or the the, the oscillators it's just yeah it's very clever stuff it's a what it is it's a very different way of interacting with with the sound the sonic you know the sonic signature there is another video which i found i think or you may have included mm. but which i had a look at um which goes into a bit more depth about what exactly is happening mm. and it's having watched that i just went oh that's that's kind of cool so yeah it's definitely worth having a look at i, I quite like this do, ben do you like this I, i'm fascinated by it I, I, did, my only concern is it, it's such a novel interface that does that is that going to take time to master or it, does it seem intuitive I, I, if you me, watch if you it, watch it, the video the, the second video where it shows off how that's used you'll see straight away no is the answer to that it's really really intuitive it, oh, right. it, it's very intuitive indeed right. and you can oh, grab good. hold of stuff and it it just kind of oh right that's what that yeah. does it's i actually, loved it i love the on. idea of the uh loading a sample in and then it giving you it, it's almost like a library match isn't it but like for the real world you just bring something in and get similar sounds and then yeah. you can tweak them it's so good it, it's they could be onto something groundbreaking here. It's... I seem to remember with Sim the original Simplant that it, it it was like you were worried about, Ben. It, it, it kind of... I just think, what am I doing here? I'm not kind yeah. of sure. Whereas what they seem to have done now is just made it much more intuitive. Or maybe I'm just getting it now and maybe it hasn't changed an, an awful well, lot. Well, one, one of the parts of the demo is them sampling a hardware synth, which mm -hmm. is doing a sequence, you know, bass synth doing something. They sample it in and then they, it recreates that or it recreates lots of different versions of that, which you can then start playing around with, changing the pulsing, the, the, the gating, the filter, everything about it. Um, and it, it it's it's actually quite extraordinary. It's actually quite extraordinary. I do like it. I have to say. Mm. So I'm just going to see if I can. Let's see if I can do this, because I've all, I always have trouble with um, sharing plugins from Logic with this system because it doesn't. It always shows Logic, but it doesn't show the actual plugin window, and you can't select the plugin window on its own. So I have to do this. And share the entire screen. There we go. There you go. So this this oh. this is simple art too. So see, I don't know if you can see on the screen there that this little brown dot that's just here will oh. jump onto each branch as it as I play the the respective note. So it moves around. But what I can do is I can go into the DNA. So this bit here is the un envelopes and LFOs. This is the oscillators, and then this is the filter and effects. And I can just grab hold of of elements. Oh wow! <laughs> and just little things, and you don't really even need to know exactly what it is that you're doing. You just pl pull around things. Mm. Um, and it's yeah it's very very good and then um i don't know if i'll be able to do this live um so this is the geno patch thing and you just basically load up a a reference sound so let's see if i can let me see if i can do this from here um let me just load just this random this i've just literally picked this out of uh nowhere so that's the, that's the sample so i can then just i can use these uh here to just so that, I'm going to say that's what I want. That, that's the sound yeah. that I like. I can just hit these little buttons here. And now it's going through. <laughs> okay, and it's kind of growing this, this sound. So if I then play it with the keyboard, I can then choose 
choose different, and then I can do more of them. And it's just going through and it's analysing that sound and coming up with other sounds that are a little bit like this. And it's just evolving all the time. And it's and then you wow. click on it and then keep just. Pink Floyd echoes. And, and yeah, and then you just kind of get into this whole thing. And then you can then take, you can generate the patches and then they're in your patch library and then you can mess around with them. It's. It, so click, click, on the, click on the click on the um uh, 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 the cross here. The close that window out. The just, just there we go, and you're back in there. Now you can start yep. editing and doing. See, and you can mess around with the tuning, the effects, the atonality. The, yeah, I mean. It is bonkers, but it's it's, it's yeah. a rabbit hole bonkers. It is a rabbit hole bonkers, I, I, but I quite like it. Yeah, yeah the, the, the genome patch, whatever it is, you need that because I don't think that you'd be able to get the sound that you wanted just just from messing with these yeah. things, would you? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it comes, it's yeah, good it that it can... A ton of presets just to get you started, you know, and then you can take those presets and then, you know, extrapolate from them and, yeah. and go... Go beyond yeah. beyond those. It's it really is, and it's 149 euros, I believe. Um, I think it's what we said. Um, but yeah, it's it's mm, very fascinating. Different. Yeah, very I mean, if you're different. into sound design, this is a dream, an absolute yeah. dream. Yeah, it's very good. I wonder how how easy it's going to make my job though. Like whether I could like just <laughs> feed like sounds in off 80s stuff and get it Why to rip not? it off. Yeah. Well, I don't know. If it's it's not so much about ripping it off. It's it's taking that as a as a as an inspiration, and then seeing oh, what yeah. else yeah. you can kind of squeeze out of it. It's um it's very clever. Um, yeah, Sonic Charge Simplant is available now. Um, you can upgrade. I believe the if you've got Simplant One, um, let me just add this to the stage. So Simplant One, you can upgrade for fifty euros. <laughs> um, but if you are new to it, it's 149, which again is is not um, an awful amount of money. I think I think we've been missing this today, so let me just. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> pour pour water on the sea, so you can see what grows. Um, probably something you could sell for some decent amount of money on the uh, behind the bike sheds. Um, I like yeah. this. Yeah, I like. No, it. I just like the fact it's, it's different, and it is. It doesn't seem madly complex. I mean, yeah. it sounds like you can get madly complex, but I like. It. What I don't know yet, and I would like to know, is how long a sample can be that you can do mm. that with. Is it just a that long or that long? Or? Don't know. Yeah, but really yeah, good. it's a good thing. Yeah, definitely. Um, so you can buy that from SonicCharge.com. Uh, that is where you can go. Right. Um, so we've done Sonic Charge. We've done Reaper. We've done Bitwig. We've done Arturia. We've done. We've done it all. We've done it all. Wow. We've so, done the whole thing. Apart from one pe one piece of shameless self promotion, and I am oh. completely and utterly shameless. Um, but a lot of people have been asking, or were asking, after Synthfest 2023, if. Um, the seminar that myself and Dr. Manny Fernandez did would be available online. And, of course, I can confirm that it is. And Yay! it is there um, on the Sound on Sound magazine channel. Um, I'm not going to play it all because they'll probably strike me down with um, a copyright slam or something. Um, but, yeah, it's there. They've um, just slightly edited it a little bit and brought it down to about 40 minutes. Didn't get the Q&As Q in there. I don't know whether that was a, a choice because there were some really good questions in there. But, um, yeah, it's uh, me, Manny, and all that gear on stage. Oh, and friend. an advert. Can make a big difference. Thank you for that. You can go <laughs> take a running jump. But what blew me away is that it's only been up three days, and, ha and it's had been, have... 10,000 views. <gasps> That's great. Well, mm. well. None, of our, none of our stuff goes to 10,000 views. And no. we do one of those. Um, yeah, so... We'll do this naked next week. That'll get it up. Right. <laughs> In more ways than one. <laughs> oh, <dear. Oof>. yeah. 
<laughs> Wagyu saying, oh my God, they edited it. Yeah, they, they didn't really take out a huge... They just cleaned out probably some ums and ahs. And I, I tell you what else they did do is... Yeah, so I did this demo of the St. Elsewhere theme using the entire YCAMS kit. And they they cut a little bit out of that because it did go... I, I thought, yeah, I should press play and just stand here with my arms folded, letting the computer do all the work. Um, it was funny because the, when that piece ended the entire room applauded and i'm thinking i didn't do that uh, it was just me pressing a button somebody else programmed it <laughs> so applaud the computer but no it, it's all there um i so. enjoy and i enjoyed it enormously i oh, thought good. you 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 did your bit you were a, a very genial and informative host dr manny did his thing which was very very good he's 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 a nerd and i love him for it mm -hmm. you know the science nerd thing i think it just came across really well so well done i'm not surprised it's got ten thousand views it's just bonkers i mean i was saying before the show the fairlight seminar that i did in 2019 has probably got three or four thousand views since 2019 this has been up three days and it's got over ten thousand, which is just it's mind-blowing um mm. some people have been asking about the other demos that were in that package and so what i think i might do is just record them and then just set it to some images lovely images of tx816s and things like that and and put them up um birthing weasels you could have it with yeah birthing, birthing weasels, weasels. weasels. Mm. um so yeah if you want to go and see that it's on the sand on sound channel um Go and watch it. Give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Where? What, what did I just see Wagu post? He said at some point that the penguin of death is always naked. How dare you? Penguin true. of death is always naked. Prove him wrong. Oh, no, he is. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Wagu. He is. You never told me that, <laughs> penguin of death. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, so <clears throat> I think there's that, and there was nothing else, I don't think, other than to reiterate that um, thank you, uh, thanks to our wonderful guest uh, this week, Mr. David Gamson. If you missed Gamson, um, go back and rewind and watch the first hour of the show because um, it was a great little chat with him, and he's a, uh, just a really lovely guy and very, very clever. And, of course, um, he is the co-writer and producer of the new album by Hannah Diamond, which is yeah, out now uh, on it. vinyl and digital download. Go buy and buy it, it from the Bandcamp page and support the artist directly. Yeah. Uh, and she's playing um, uh, across Europe, and she's doing a, a gig in San Francisco this very evening. So what's it now? It's like 1 p.m. Uh, in San Fran. Um, so, yeah. You've got a few hours to uh, sort out, you know, sort out your garb, put some lippy on, and um, go to a place called the Rickshaw Stop in San Francisco, or as we call it, Sifo, on, on the airplane ticket. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I believe that's a show, gentlemen. Oh. Oh. It Lovely. whizzed by, absolutely oh. whizzed by. I'm going to go off and listen to this. This was released 45 years ago today. Today, 45 years ago. What the hell? Young Perez, I bought that. I bought the original. French. Whoop. 45 years. I love the picture on the back. It's rather nice. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and of course, yes, go and buy your Swan Chorus album as well. Yes. Um, and I've got a new Pet Shop Boys thing to listen to. Relentless has just been released. So. And if, if you're so minded and you actually have a subscription to Disney, there is the Beatles Get Back thing, you let it be, the, the whole the, mm. the whole last album thing they were supposed Three, two, two, two and a half hour um, sections to it, the whole 17 or 20 days of making of that album. It's fascinating. Absolutely it's fascinating. Brilliant. Yeah, I bought the I bought it on Blu-ray, even though it's on Disney. I subscribed to Disney. I bought it on Blu-ray in case it doesn't come, you know, it goes away or something. Yeah, get stunning. it on Blu-ray. Yeah. It's a it's a fascinating thing. Yeah, fascinating. Very, very good indeed. I right. Well, there right. you go. That's a show, um, gentlemen. Thank you as always um, for your company. I won't be here next week. Oh, oh, oh! Other shameless bit of promotion. I completely ooh, forgot. Ooh, Let me just. What? Because um, if I don't do this, I'll get told off. 
Um, so the reason I'm not here next week is I'm going to be in London and I'm going to be in London doing um, introducing and then doing a Q&A for the Don Lewis movie, which gets its UK premiere um, at the Barbican Centre. Now, the, the really exciting thing about this is that we were going to be playing in Cinema 2, which is one of the smaller cinemas. Demand has been that high that they've now bumped us to the biggest screen at the Barbican. Yes. And the last time I checked the tickets, there was about twenty or thirty left. Um, so, do you, if you, do you think all ten thousand of your viewers will want to go? I think they will. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> this guy, what this guy did for music and music technology, Don Lewis was <laughs> instrumental, if you'll excuse the pun, mm-hmm. um, yeah. in things like the TR eight hundred eight and the CR seventy eight. He advised Roland. <laughs> And he basically said, this is what I want from a drum machine. So you've got this man to thank for things like the 808. You've got this man to thank for, for a huge bunch of sounds on the Yamaha DX7. Um, he was, he, didn't he, he was the first to really connect electronic instruments together in a way that allowed you to perform yeah. pre-MIDI or anything else. He was, oh, yeah, he was a genius. Yeah. He, was doing, yeah. he was doing connections between disparate musical instruments. He had ARPs. He had Hammonds, he had um, Roland stuff, he had uh, Oberheim Sems, and he was having them all talk to each other, and he could control them all from his top panel on his organ. And he had foot pedals as well. He was surrounded, and it was called the Live Electronic Orchestra, Leo. Yeah. Um, but what this guy went through, he was um, an engineer in the Navy and was also a nuclear weapons engineer. So, I mean, he's got... He's, marbles were just like fantastic and then he got into um you know making this thing because he wanted to do it all himself and then he fell foul of the musicians union because yeah. they thought he was putting people out of work and also at the, it was at the time when there were two different tiers for the musicians union yes. in the united states Based on the color of your skin Based on the colour of your skin, can we believe that now? I mean, is that still? Yeah, is that so he he fought well. against it. He had a, a a big and long struggle. So yeah. yeah, I heartily support this. I really want to see this movie. And the I amazing you... thing is, through all that, he never lost that smile. Yeah, that that positivity, and it's infectious. I mean, I interviewed him, and I, I we could have gone on for hours. He was just an amazing guy. And the, the sad thing is, he was planning to come over. Uh, once the premiere had been sorted out, but unfortunately he passed away about a year ago. Uh, actually, it'll be mm. a year in November. Um, and so that never happened, um, which is a, a great sadness. But his um, his wife, Julie, uh, will be there next week. So will Ned, the director and producer and the, the editor of this film. He's done a fantastic new cut, which is an hour and 20 minutes long. Tickets are £13.50 of your British pence. And you can buy them online at the Dock and Roll Film Festival website, which is uh, dockandrollfestival.com, or you can just go straight to the Barbican uh, and book your seats there. And uh, yeah, come and come and say hi. Go, go! Yeah, I want to see that. I, do you mm. think it, so? When is it being released generally, or is it going to be put out on Blu-ray or something? What, what's the? So there was an original DVD release about two years ago, which is now been sold out and um can't be bought anymore but that's a different cut of the film this has been extended had a load more footage thrown in um i mean it features people like kakahashi san before he passed um yeah. it, it features uh quincy jones it features uh gary lewenberger and um a whole bunch of other people some uh, are with us and some no longer so it's, it's it was it's captured a whole bunch of very important people on film talking about this guy and what he did, and of course, you know, Don's no longer with us, so this is a real kind of testament to to him. Um, but yeah, brilliant man and a brilliant film to so come and watch. And it. a pioneer, yeah, 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 definitely. Good luck with that, Robbie. Thank you very much. Um, and say, if you do come there, do come and say hello. And as I always say, tell me what your YouTube handle is. If you if you tell me your na- just your name, I might not recognise you. But you know, somebody did that to me at Synthfest, and they said, "Hi, Robbie. My name is whatever it was." And I'm like, "Hi." <laughs> I have no idea. Um, it was only like afterwards that I found out who it was, so I apologise. But yeah, do do make sure you mention who you are. Um, and we should be signing. No, I won't be signing autographs. Um, anyway, yeah, there you go. And on that note, I think it's time to end the show. I need a drink. Um, Me too. <laughs> oh. 
Uh, I need to go and pick my daughter up, and I, hopefully it's stopped raining, but um, it doesn't seem to have stopped raining all day. There we go. We'll be back same time, same place next week. I won't be here. Maybe we can persuade Mike to come and stand in my shoes again. We don't know if Ben's going to be here or not because his calendar is on his phone and he's using his phone as his camera tonight. I know, yeah, I'm used to So we don't want to mess that up. <laughs> um, hopefully, um, Kenty Poos will be feeling better and will be back in the saddle, Yay! so to speak. Um, I did just want to say, Ben, um, Kent left you a message. <laughs> there you go. Ta-da! Ta-da! Um, so yeah, I hope uh, hope Kent's feeling better soon, and um, we'll have him back on the show. I'm sure very soon. Yeah, well, Thank you, Ken. Andrew. Thank you, Ben. Um, have a fantastic weekend, everyone. We will see you. Well, I won't, but the rest of you will see you guys next <laughs> week. Um, and then we might have a very special guest the week after. Can't say much about that at the moment. We're still in the planning stages, but uh, I had a very interesting email from somebody uh, about half an hour before we went on air, and I'm like, yes, please, we'll have some of that. So. Um, keep your peepers peeled um and make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit the bell then and send cake and then send cake and send money. cake and money money and money, female yeah. penguins for the penguin of death no he doesn't no um no he's celibate <clears throat> oh apparently mike's doing the aes convention in new york so it might just be you andrew on your well own. it might just be me or i might be I might, I'll, see, I'll have yeah i'll have a chat with young ty there you go <gasps> yeah, you'll get ty on but here's, Ben here's hopefully will. But we'll work it out. It'll all work. It'll all be fine. We'll figure it out. We'll figure It'll it out. all be fine. All right, guys and girls, um, take it easy. Um, I'm just going to pad while I find the right buttons here. Uh, see you all <laughs> soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Have a great weekend. Bye. <laughs>